What's up, Brosners? Ritep here. Stick around after today's episode for a new segment we're going to be releasing where loyal Brosner Drew Keynes and his co-host Dom are going to be breaking down some uh, pictures that have been uploaded to our iNaturalist by fellow Brosners, and they will be given science facts and quips about these amazing finds that you guys have been uploading to our iNaturalist project. So stick around for that after the show premiering, then those are going to be released weekly. Hope you like it. See you then. Wild times. Is that what you do in the jingle place? Yeah, that's my that's uh, my real jingle dance. Um, woo! Here we go. Episode number ninety-seven of the Wild Times podcast, the biggest podcast in the world, the only yeah. podcast that is bigger than uh, Impulsive and Joe Rogan combined. It's incredible what numbers we're doing these days. Thank you to both our brosters <laughs> that are listening to this for making us get all the way there. Um, I've got, we've got a fun guest tonight, but before we do that, we'll do the regular old introduction. If you don't know by episode number 97, you got a lot of catching up to do. I am your host, the broologist, Forrest Galante. Joining me tonight is the one and only producer, the spice man, Patrick DeLuca himself. How you doing, Pat? Doing great. Super excited about this one. Let's I go. can tell by your low monotone. That's uh, sounds. I just awesome. want to get through these introductions so we can start hanging out with our guests. We're doing it. We're doing it. It's part God, of he's podcasting. He's already grim. He's yeah. already grim. Oh my God. Yep. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a night for the professor and I to gang up on the producer. Uh, oh, yeah. Is the one and only PhD in podcasting, Mr. Peter Fitzer. How you doing, Peter? I'm good. I'm sweating through my shirt because I spent a whole bunch of time trying to set up the sound effects, but. Not working. Also, Pat, you look beautiful today. Don't be a curmudgeon. Now to the important <laughs> guest. Uh, Peter, never admit that you're sweating through your shirt. Nobody knows. You Dude, just look like you it's got it's kind of sexy. It's not. Um, it's I would have thought it was part of the design. See? See? Yeah, exactly. Edit, edit, Kyle, edit. <laughs> nope, no Kyle, no Kyle for that. All right. And finally, introducing our guest, the king of brochal media. See what I did there? <laughs> Um, Mamadou himself, welcome to the podcast, sir. Hey, man, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for reaching out. And uh, that was a smooth flex of the beginning. I don't think I didn't catch that. That was that, that was slick. I like that. You like that? That's what's up, dude. Well, welcome to the Wild Times. It's great to have you. I know you and I have, uh, we've messaged back and forth for what, like a year and a half, two years now. Um, yeah. You know, I know you've, uh, you've commented on some of my videos, which is fun, like reposted them and done that. But if anybody doesn't know who you are, give us a background on everything that you have. I mean, you're spreading a lot of pretty awesome content on the internet about wildlife. Like, explain what you're doing to people, please. Basically, I'm uh, kind of just an internet zoologist. I make these videos about uh, these animal fact videos. I try to be educational, I try to be entertaining, and try to leave something, leave people with something to take away from it while also making them laugh. Uh, I've been doing this for about uh, two years now, uh, mostly on TikTok. Uh, I've also um, branched out to Instagram and YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, my videos are pretty formulaic. I just have uh, the green screen in the background. And I just talk and people listen. And it's been going yeah. pretty well. What, what got people. you started? Like, did it start by being like, hey, I'm super into animals. So let me see if I can like make something work teaching people about animals or did it start like, I kind of want to make an online business. What's a good topic? Like how did, how'd you get uh, there? That's a going to have to start the whole art. So originally <laughs> uh, I'll try not to make it too long, but, uh, long I went to college want, for, uh, in, yeah. How long do we have? Uh, so basically, <laughs> uh, I went to college for, um, environmental science, which surprisingly has very little to do with animals. Not a whole lot of overlap there. I had like one ecology course, so that always surprises people. So I uh, graduated in 2019 and I started working in environmental management, which uh, and a lot of our work was uh, based in New York. A certain thing happened in 2020 that kind of cut most of that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had already started. I was only there for about two or three months and uh, I was still well within the training phase. And uh, they cut a lot of our work down. So obviously they cut our work down. I'm one of the new guys there. I was the youngest, both like in terms of how long I was there and obviously age. And uh, I'm still like in a training phase. So if I have to go out somewhere, they're gonna have to bring somebody with me. So they're paying like two guys for one job. So I saw the writing on the wall. Yeah. And I always say this because it's always funny how things lined up. I downloaded TikTok April 15th of 2020 
And I was officially like let go the very next day from that company. No way. <laughs> oh, oh shit. It was yeah, meant I, to be, man. Swear to God. Swear to God. And I I uh, downloaded TikTok the, same, the way everyone else did. I said it was as a joke, but I didn't really have anything better to do. And then the right. very next day, I found out I really didn't have anything better to do. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's when I posted my first uh, video. It's still up there, and it has absolutely nothing to do with animals. And uh, yeah, what what you asked. Um, how I like shifted into the animal content. It was supposed to just be a one-off video. And I remember the time it was supposed to be animals that are way bigger than you think, mostly because I saw that first video. Oh yeah, yeah, if you scroll all the way down, I wonder how long that would take. It's basically just this like stupid, like a uh, Tinder video or something. <laughs> I thought that was like You broke in with Tinder. I mean, dude, th that's basically a zoo. Come on. That's true. Pretty oh yeah, that's pretty true. much. All types of wildlife <laughs> on there. But, uh, yeah, no, I saw that. Uh, I'm not trying to make too many video references, but have you ever seen that video of the moose walking next to the car? Like, of course, the yeah. internet was I'm freaking the fuck out because it was I'm, like, holy shit. Yeah, I'm so huge. I was going to say, we, we brought it up on this podcast like 94 episodes ago and showed it and talked about it. So, yeah, no, we definitely know it. Yeah, so I saw that and I was like, you know what? I, I thought I knew a lot about animals. I was like, I forgot how much of a problem moose are. So then I made the video, animals way bigger than you think. I didn't really expect it to like go off the way it did. But, um, you know, I just, that, it, that went there. I, I did another part. How many that, views like, did that off. first moose video get? I mean, or I'm animals sure that are bigger than you expect? Something about a couple hundred thousand, which was like huge for me at the time. Of course. Uh, yeah. I think since then it's obviously broken a billion. So I just did it again and did it again. And I remember even at one point I said, I'm really just going to do this until y'all stop watching it. And then I shifted to like other animal videos. And again, uh, at this point, I'm, I'm like bored and unemployed. I have nothing better to do. So I can just pump out videos like nothing. Right. So like, That's great. Yeah, I kind of blew up from then. I think I joined TikTok at like the perfect time. Everyone was like in quarantine. Everyone was bored. No one had anything better to do. And yep. uh yeah, like the growth was like really explosive. Like I downloaded it in April. I started the animal videos probably like early, early June, late May. And then like I hit like maybe half a million, then a million. And then it kind of just went from there. I don't That's remember crazy. what point it was that I figured this would be like a career. I was kind of just like just going with it. Yeah. I, I, when, when we when we got on TikTok, all of our listeners made fun of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's getting, they refused to get on and then finally a bunch of them came over and uh, now they're on there so hopefully Dude, anyone <laughs> under the age of 20 consumes no other media like Correct. I have a I have an 18 year old Correct. nephew and he thinks I'm like a clown because I watch TV <laughs> <laughs> like, and th these are the people that every advertiser in the world wants to target like right. I'm fucking 41 no one th apparently I don't spend any money because I'm way out of the target demo. Everyone wants 18 to 25 year olds because they spend a, they spend apparently a shitload of money. It's but they don't have lifetime. any money. It doesn't make any sense. It, I don't know. Over the I, lifetime, dude. Over the between lifetime. the ages of 18 and 25, I think I had a total of 700 dollars for that entire <laughs> amount of years. Like, what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. I know. Uh, dude, their yeah. rationale is if you pay for cable, you're already a lost cause. Yeah, right. I don't think anyone right. does that anymore. Yeah, they're like, you're <laughs> dumb. You're paying for cable. You are not our demo. You'd think um, the opposite, though, because that, that would lead to you thinking that you're an unintelligent, you're fiscally irresponsible if you're buying cable these days. Well, Forrest and I fucked up. We're in the wrong industry, and yep. we'll be <laughs> yep. begging Mamadou for a job in six months. Yeah, we'll we'll ride that ship all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, no exactly. Problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dude, you know what? You have done social media right. And that's what's amazing here because so there's so much wildlife media out in the world, right? Like from the Attenborough pieces, which nothing against anybody to to all these other types of media. Yours is funny. It's highly entertaining. It's short. And you come out of there going, holy shit, I just learned three things in 15 seconds. And it gets millions of views. And that's what's crazy to me. Like, you know, Patrick and I will spend a mil, not like we have this money, but we'll spend a million dollars of the network's money to make an hour long thing or two hour long things or whatever it is. And 200,000 people watch it, 400,000 people if we're lucky. And then you put out a 15 second thing of you going, holy shit, check out this cheetah it can run this fast. And 14 million people watch it. And I'm it, like, that's incredible. That has so much more impact and reach than 
anything else. I, I don't know. I'm just blown well, away for, by what Forrest, you've been able that's, to do. That's basically why you got into the industry to begin with in TV is to make an impact and get people to understand about the you know conservation and of these course. extinct animals and everything. Of course. So is it fair to say uh, that you failed? I would say so. Yeah, at this point, I would say that's a good, accurate depiction. Um, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no, so I mean, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was ahead. gonna say. So, like, we're now that you're kind of. I mean, I'm sure you're, I know you post other stuff, but like a lot of you know, you have millions of followers that obviously love the animal content. Are you? Obviously, you went for environmental science and stuff. Like, are are you excited to be kind of the TikTok animal guy? Definitely. I feel like if five-year-old me was seeing what I was doing now, he'd be really excited. Yeah. Originally, I didn't think there was a lane for, like, somebody with an interest in animals to, like, have a career that wasn't involved in, like, being a vet or something. Right. There weren't a whole, like, obviously you see Steve Irwin and the Coyote Petersons, but you'd look at that as, like, an anomaly, not really something that's, like, attainable just for, like, the average person. So right. I think I kind of played it safe with the whole environmental science thing. So the fact that I'm able to do this now, something I'm legitimately like interested in, it that's why people look at me crazy when I used to say I would like post four or five times a day. Like to me, it didn't really feel like work because like half of it, like the researching and stuff, I'll probably do it on my own anyway because yeah. I was always interested in that. And then like just making people laugh. Yeah, I was that kid in class that wouldn't shut up, shut up and it would be on my like report card. Like, as pro- <laughs> like and I, I, you know, I, this is just a side right. I always hated that. I, I was I was a solid A, B student. But then all it would take is that one comment like has trouble staying like staying quiet or something. Like talks too much and yeah. it would just fuck everything up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like now you're in yeah. trouble and you're like, what about the six A's? So yeah. these, these are the exactly. people that exactly. you, Forrest, you and Pat always complain about who are the ones that never go in the field. His teachers, I'm saying, are the ones that never go in the field and do any of the research. They just like complain about everybody else's research and behavior. Yeah. Yes and I no. I, 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 yeah, I see what you were trying to do. It's a good, good, good try to joke there, Peter. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> it wasn't a joke. I was being dead serious. Well, no. I know what you mean. I think what Patrick and I complain about are the people that never go into the field that call themselves experts at things, um, as far as like academics and scientists that have never seen the shark that we're literally filming or you know the skeleton that's being dug up and they've just written papers about it. I think that's a little bit different to Mamadou spreading information to millions and millions of people no, about no. animals. All right. What, whatever. It's different. F off. No, no way, what I'm saying is that the teacher, him getting reported for the behavior is akin to you guys getting shit for researching in the field because they're annoyed with and, and jealous oh, kind of. I'm you sorry. I didn't I'm not, I'm not clear friend. all the time. Forgive me. No, you're too sweaty to, spe- to be coherent. Um, Listen, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not have air conditioning anymore? Why are you so I sweaty and told you I was running around the fucking house all day trying to get some shit set up for this. You know, I'm and I'm obese. You know, I'm. I'm <laughs> uh, according to, I'm clinically obese. All right. <laughs> By the way, did you guys have any of you guys seen? I just watched this week. Uh, so uh, National Geographic relaunched their Explorer series on Disney Plus, and it's like pretty fucking epic. Like they're spending oh, no, real, real money. They're making like four a year. They're dope, man. I just watched cool. this one called The Last Tapui. Okay. It's awesome. So it's this uh, field biologist named Bruce Means um, who's like probably 70 and like not the most nimble in shape guy. <laughs> and, and there's these things in the Amazon called tapuis. They're like these huge rock cliffs that stick up. Uh-huh. They're straight fucking vertical. And then there's a jungle on top. And Bruce means this was like his last thing he wants to do before he's too old to do field work is explore the top of this one Tapui to look for fucking uh, new species. Oh, and so, cool. yeah. And so he, they basically huh. trek through this Amazon jungle, dude. I mean, no joke. It's like a 20 day trek through fucking mud. It's so Damn. brutal looking. <laughs> and then Alex Honnold, the guy who made free solo. Yeah. yeah. I see him there. Uh, climbs this shit and basically figures out a way to rig to lift the 70 year old guy up this thing to look for new species it's epic holy crap that's wow that's like a check that out yeah that's amazing that's really cool so um, it leads me to a question though for our guest so mamadou yes, i figured so this was bruce means he's 70 you're a young man what's your like number one bucket list 
animal experience, wildlife experience that you've never had that's like your top thing if someone just gave you a million bucks to go do an expedition or something like that? I have two things. One, I want to go on like a, a safari in Africa to actually nice. experience that. That's always been the landscape I wanted to like experience in person. Sure. And two, I want, to, I want to go to Australia and just see what type of fuckery I can find in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the running jokes on my channel. Australia is like just a whole nother level. I want to go there. That's yeah. awesome. You got to link I mean, up with uh, uh, Andrew Randy. Yuckles. Oh, BTG, no, yeah. BTG, man. It's the craziest Aussie people. you'll ever meet. Also yeah. in the animal it's world. It's the old running joke about how everything in Australia just has 10 ways of killing you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. So, Forrest, you've spent a lot of time there. I mean, like, it's, yeah. it's, is it true? Is, is, is Australia the place where everything wants to kill you? I've said this before, and I, I always get hate for it, but I'm going to say it again because I like the hate. Um, it, uh, everybody, all Australians think like, oh, you know, don't come here. Everything's so brutal. It's so tough down here. It's like, fuck off, you soft little Aussies. Like, go to Africa. Everything there can actually kill you. Like, Australia, you got, like, a couple spiders, a couple snakes, and a bad jellyfish, right? The rest uh -huh. is, like, kangaroos and rabbits. It's like, fuck <laughs> off. Go to Africa, man. Like, ev we got the snakes. We got the spiders. Plus about 15 things that weigh more than you that want to eat you and can run you over. And I, I've always said that as an African who most of my friends when we left Zimbabwe went to Australia and they're like, yeah, this place sucks. Like it's not <laughs> it's like you read all this stuff about how crazy it is. Now, that being said, the animals in Australia are just so unique. I know where that reputation comes from and I, I understand that stigma. But you want to you want to put your tail between your legs. Go go on a walking safari. It's a lot scarier than cruising around the outback and seeing a spider run by. Yeah, I was right about to say, I think that's what gets people. It's just the fact that everything is so just in Australia. They're, they're so creative with the ways they kill you. Yes. Like obviously <laughs> you look at a lion or a hyena, you know what it could do to you. And then you right. look at a platypus. You wouldn't think that it could fuck your entire month up. But like, one, totally. like hit a bed, <laughs> like, it, that's that's a very good point. And yeah, they're everything there is so venomous. That's what's crazy too. And they don't look a lot of it doesn't look venomous. Like a lot of Australian snakes look benign and they're like incredibly deadly. Like if you just saw it come across, it's not like it has a diamond shaped head like a viper everywhere else in the world or anything. You're like, "Oh, this just looks like a, you know, boring brown house snake that we have all over southern Africa and you pick it up and it's a brown snake and you're dead in 30 seconds." And I think that that is what has led to a lot of that reputation. So Mama, dude, let me ask you this: Is that like the next step in your evolution of, of cause like you have you are at the top of your field in like content creation for TikTok and spreading awareness with Casual Geographic and that thing? Are you going to go and film in the field? Is that something you're thinking about doing? That is definitely something I'm thinking about in the future. Like right now, I've been trying to just see how far I can take this social media thing. It's a huge springboard for other opportunities. For sure. But obviously, it's not something you're going to do like forever it's not the end all be all i think the i guess the ultimate goal would be to be able to do what i'm doing but actually be out in the field because there's only so much you can really convey when you're just in front of a green screen if you're right. out there being able to explain things as they're happening i think that's when you're really going to be able to like make that connection to people and bro uh, my entire yeah. livelihood is explaining <laughs> things while they're happening and actually here we go here's what we're going to do kyle go to mamadou's page it might even be pinned um, and pull up the video that I shot. Oh, I know, I know where you're going. Yeah. I'm going to find it right now because I know what you're talking about. Yeah. The Cayman getting dragged up the bank by the Jaguar. And I put it up, and we're not going to compare <laughs> videos because it's way too embarrassing for me. But I put it up, and I'm like, check this out. This is cool. And then Mamadou throws it up, and it's like, man, this badass motherfucker is doing this and doing this. And it's just like it's so much better than the way I did it. And it just it went bonkers on your page, right? I wouldn't say better, but uh, actually I found it right there. So if you like type in my username and then put Jaguar, it's like the first thing that comes up. There you go. Kyle, pull that up. It, it is very funny. Um, well, Forrest, you know, there's something to be said for I can teach you how to hammer a nail. I true. can't teach you how to be Brad Pitt. You know, <laughs> there's just a certain amount of charisma that you're never going to learn. I'm it's trying, true. dude. I go to the phone all the there time. It like, it's just, but it's not happening. Oh, it's the music, too. Come on. 
Yeah, it's time we talk about just how much of a fucking joke Jaguars are. <laughs> First of all, Jaguars were regularly clad, came in by going into the water oh and dragging them out by their teeth like a disobedient child. And that's because Jaguars do something that no other big cat does. Because while lions, tigers, and leopards put their prey out of their misery by biting the neck, Jaguars apparently watch Endgame and go directly for the head, which is to be the Cayman's weak point. And since this walking vice grip has the strongest bite of any cat, that means it puts the Cayman in a coffin by biting through its skull and piercing its walnut-sized brain. Oof. After the Jaguar cancels his life subscription, he'll then manhandle the Cayman out of the water. Just for the record, Cayman can grow to weigh hundreds of pounds. It's like deadlifting a washing machine, but only using your teeth. Think about it like this. Leopards are strong enough to lift and carry their victims into the trees where they can eat them without having to pay taxes to lions or hyenas. Jaguars are literally everything leopards are on steroids, and the good kind too. The kind that helps you win Tour de France seven times. So yeah, Jaguars are one of the crocodile's little brother. I don't know why I threw that shot in there. Run at it's miles per hour. funny. They look like this underwater. Jesus. There's no immigration control for a homicidal Garfield on PED. <laughs> because they can climb building a wall ain't about to do shit. Jaguars are a cheat code that God forgot to patch. Do you do you write that? I was just gonna it? ask if he writes them before or not. I yeah. was gonna ask the same uh, thing. These days, since I like bake so many and I try to like stay on schedule, I'll write like a general like guideline just so I hit all the points I want to hit on right. without like rambling on. But a lot of the jokes, like the deadlifting a washing machine, that just kind of like hits me while I'm recording, and then I'll stop and I was like, wait, that was kind of funny. I'll do that one. I'll keep that one in. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, it's kind. A lot of it's like spur in the moment. Dude, you have you ever done like stand up comedy? Like, I, I'm pitching you a new business right here. Okay, can we can we do the can we do the pitch it game with Mamadou? Sure, fuck yeah, yeah okay. dude. Okay, all right, Mamadou. Here's how the game works. We do this every once in a while. You are the talent, okay? But you are the highest, most sought after talent in North America. Okay. Now, Peter owns a terrible network. Patrick owns a dying cable channel, and I own Big Streaming Service One, which is Netflix. Um, no, I'm just kidding. We all, we are, we're all executives at different networks. Here's what the we're going to do. go on this guy. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to pitch you a concept, and at the end of each of our pitches, you have to accept one of them as the next thing that you're going to do after social media. You ready? Oh, shit. Sounds I want him to pitch one. Fuck. Nope. Now i got to come go up with us. one. Nope. You go nope. first because you've got your idea already. I've got mine. All right, Mama, dude. Listen, thank you so much for coming into Big Studio One. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Obviously, your reputation precedes you. We sincerely appreciate everything you've done on social media. Now, I know from uh, previous conversations with my assistant that you have expressed... <laughs> Um, an interest in traveling into the field. But here's the thing. The field's dead. Nobody's doing that anymore. Okay, nobody travels. Co COVID, whatnot, budgets are shrinking. So here's what I'd like you to do, okay? As this hot, incredible talent, I'm suggesting a 12-part stand-up special, okay? <laughs> Think Netflix comedy stand-up special, except you're just doing animal jokes, okay? You write them yourself. You can have visual aids. It's like a Tosh.0 meets uh, Dave Chappelle, okay? You got visuals, you got the jokes, and you just get up there and you rip on the microphone. Will you sign with me without hearing any of the other offers? I have to do hear it. the other offers first. It's smart. Also, He's a good what, business. Like that, that would just be bad business. Netflix <laughs> yeah. just offering a stand-up special. What else is new? <laughs> eh, it's <laughs> sort of a multimedia thing. I, I, I see it. Yeah. I see it. It's nice. Um, all right, Mamadou, thanks for meeting with me. Uh, I know Forrest said that I'm, I, my cable network's dying. Our ratings have never been higher. Um, uh, we're very popular with people over 60. Um, sure. And so uh, well, here's what I'd like to do. I want to really think outside the box. That's what we do here at this network. I'd like you to visit 12 different countries. So we're going to do a 12-episode series. In each country, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot sort of like a Blair Witch-style found footage film of you on an animal expedition. Uh, equal parts, sort of funny, uh, but you're also in the field showing some cool stuff. But here's the, here's the trick. At the end of each episode, you get brutally mauled and killed by an animal. And it's sort of like the South Park thing with Kenny. Um, <laughs> it's hilarious. Obviously, you won't get hurt. We'll have stunt doubles. But the end of every episode, you get to pick which animal kills you and how. It'll be hilarious. It'll be terrifying. <laughs> it's going to make a big splash. It's good. It's very good. Okay. Uh, that's right. a tough pitch to beat. That's <laughs> yeah, pitch. I mean, well, just know that working with, uh, with that company is, is very tough. It, it's hard. They're very demanding. 
a uh, lot of ego in there. So, um, listen, thanks for coming in. I mean, I- I'm aware th- of your celebrity on TikTok. We want you to come onto our local cable channel. And uh, what we're local. what we're thinking about is a. Um, have you ever seen Wayne's World? No, I haven't. Have you ever seen uh, Have you ever seen Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis? I feel like I'm showing my age right now. No, I haven't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, you are. And Peter's your pitch is going me, great. Keep going. Yeah. Well, so uh, Im- imagine you and a fat bearded guy sitting on a couch in somebody's basement, and uh, we bring in just small animals from around the town. It could be could be lizards, worms, birds. And, uh, you know, you talk about them interestingly, and the fat guy makes jokes. What do you think? You in? You in? Oh, Peter. Peter. Wow. Interesting. That, that's great pitches all around. But, Thank uh, you. No, don't tell, tell him that. Don't tell him that that was a great pitch. <laughs> don't build him up. I can't, I can't burn the bridge completely. I, I don't know what the – I don't know what <laughs> – I might need him in the Thank future. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good business. That's good business. Good business. I will tell, say tell this. Tell us uh, where I you're think, at. Uh, so, basically, I get the stand-up uh, – thing a lot and i think what my thing is is that uh i'm at my funniest when people don't expect me to be funny if that makes sense Love like that, if i'm dude. obviously yeah. if i'm in front of like a stage and they're like tell jokes i'm like oh shit i am <laughs> going to stutter my <laughs> yeah. ass off right. it's going to be bad yeah. but i think it's the fact that i like i kind of frame myself as like an educator it's like i'm trying to teach you something but then i make some of the most out of pocket things that obviously that's why i wouldn't ever be like a teacher in a school so I think right. it's that kind of thing. <laughs> also, it's the monotone voice. My, my expression barely ever changes. It's like you subvert <laughs> expectations and like just floor people. So the Spice Bun, I think we I think we got something there because it could uh, be like 20 minutes of straight educational content. And then out of nowhere, a bear just comes and just rocks me like uh, completely. <laughs> Go to credits. And I, I just I love, I love that concept. All I right. think it's hilarious. We'll send you over a check tonight. It's, yeah, it's a great good. idea. Oh, random question. I'm allowed to curse, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. NSFW, uh, by, baby. By the way, uh, Patrick got that concept from something that we always wanted to do on Extinct or Alive, which was kill off the main cameraman, Mitch, once an episode. <laughs> and then he's just <laughs> randomly back the next episode, just like Kenny from South Park, and never explain it. And... Uh, Boy, we had come up with some incredibly elaborate ways to kill Mitch on camera, and I think we were both, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but we were both too chicken shit to ever go for it because we knew the network. Yeah, we kind of did the hybrid thing where we put that little interstitial of you fighting with him. That's true. Like when you kicked him funny. down the mountain and stuff, but yeah, yeah. We, they weren't going to go for it. No, no great. Gotta least, it I got to hear at least one of the ways you killed yeah. this man off. Agreed. And I feel like you, yeah. Do you, do you remember of him off the top of your head? I remember he died during yeah. the Lion Man bit, and I can explain that because we probably haven't talked Lion we, Man. We were going to, like, I think everything that we were planning would have also involved pestering an animal. Like, I think we wanted to try to get a rhino to sp- to spear a dummy through the stomach. That's uh, right. It was, it was all stuff that was, like, morally ambiguous, so I, I don't think we could have done it. <laughs> um, you should have so, hung him up for the meat tree. Oh, just man. Do Mitch as there were so many, so many things that would have been nice to kill him off. Um so, Mamadou, are you nervous about Karen overtaking your social media celebrity? And do you know what I'm talking about? About Karen? Karen. That's right. Karen the alligator. Karen the alligator. Karen I the alligator. Can't, can't say I've met her. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's, a, there's a recent news story that I thought was hilarious that I wanted to bring up on here. And especially because when you scroll down to the photos, it just it really adds up. So, Kyle, bring, bring that up. There's this guy in Michigan, okay, and he's got a pet alligator, right? Okay, (laughs) Michigan's weird, fair enough, but the best part about it is he's named his alligator Karen. (laughs) She sleeps in the bed with him and his ex-girlfriend, apparently. Wow. And and this this kid has been posting videos on TikTok of Karen that have accumulated, you know, like half a million followers, and... The the Fish and Wildlife Service, whatever it is, Animal Rescue, saw these videos and went and grabbed Karen and was like, yeah, you can't be doing this. Which That's I don't know bullshit. what the laws on alligator ownership in Michigan are. I don't know if anybody knows the answer to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just thought this whole thing was Dude, so, Karen's, so hilarious. He even got Karen a cubic zirconium necklace, man. She's, <laughs> yeah. she's iced out. <laughs> she's she's sleeping in his bed. 
Yep. This never this ends better well. Better than a lot of people, yeah. honestly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, probably a lot better than Karen's being taken care of right now at the fucking fish and game cage or wherever the fuck they got her. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And that is fucked up, right? The, this aggravates this guy, me. Yeah, it, it aggravates. Uh, Peter, do it. Why don't you rant about it? Because I want to hear no, why. No, I mean, it's it's you. bullshit. I mean, the guy looked. They looked like they were fine together. The alligator looked stoked. He had it on his shoulder. I mean, you're sleeping with the alligator. This is all video evidence that's on TikTok. And, okay, it may be illegal, but send him a letter and tell him he's got to fucking do something about it. Don't just come and steal the love of his life. That's bullshit. That's fair. Okay. Just Mom, saying. Your, your thoughts. I think it's setting a precedent. I think what he was doing might have been fine, but then some idiot who also wants to go viral is going to go to his local, I don't know, where do you get alligators these days? Uh, Florida? <laughs> Florida. Florida. Yeah. You, pick, you pick one up, bring him to the living room, and then he just wakes up missing a hand. So I guess maybe they're trying to <laughs> curse him, that kind it, of though. thing. I don't know. Oh, 100%. 1,000%. <laughs> you, should, yep. you should not have to pay the price that other stupid people, you know. If you can train an alligator to sleep calmly with you in bed, <laughs> you I'm should late. be taking care of all the alligators. That in only Florida. ends one way. There is that <laughs> only ends one way. I know. There is no situation in which he spends <laughs> 25 happy years of his life with an alligator <laughs> sleeping in his bed. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Look, I know. You're a here's what, here's what happened Doug the Pug became an internet phenomenon. Do you yep. know who that is, Mamadou? Yeah. Doug. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Listen. He's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. So Doug the Pug's owners are literally making several million dollars a year off of Doug. And so then you've got people all over the country going, well, what if What if I get an alligator? What if I get a chimp? Yeah. What if I fucking get a beetle? That's true. I follow yep. someone with a jaguar. <laughs> it's got a pet now, jaguar? To be fair, she runs a sanctuary, but it's a fucking jaguar. Yeah. That's crazy. That's kind of hard to beat. What does she really do with is. It? She harasses it, and it just <laughs> takes it, and I love it. It's basically just a cat, but just a whole lot bigger and a little more dangerous. Dude, that's that's like, I mean, that's the ticket right there, right? A responsible social media poster, like, saving animals and doing cool shit with them, you know? That's that's what this guy needs to turn around and do to no, prove he, everybody done. wrong. He, lo- he lost his gator. His, his, time, his time's over. Yeah. Yep. He's Fair gone. enough. I, I, I'm going to reach out. Now. Exactly. Yeah, he's got to get a crock. What's your, uh, Mamadou, what's your most watched video, and do you know why? Ooh. Most watched. I have no idea. I'd have to guess it'd be anything involving me talking to killer whales, talking about killer whales. Okay. Because I think uh, Free Willy created this idea that the killer whales are these adorable, like innocent, obviously, like he, he made friends with a kid and it's so cute. Honestly, no, they're, they're, first of all, they're doing what they do naturally. When I say they're evil, I obviously don't mean it. I feel of like course. most <laughs> people get that, but there's that one yeah. 5%, you know, you, you know, you, they're in the comments somewhere, Yeah, but of I, you, I explain how they just bully the fuck out of sharks. They straight up traumatize them. They will slap seals into oblivion and then everyone's just like, but Free Willy, and I'm like, right. no, shouldn't have feed like, him. You're like, They're nah, like, dog. But Michael Jackson <laughs> wrote a very <laughs> touching song. Uh, yeah, dude, I was, uh, was I was producing a show called Whale Wars years ago, where uh, they filmed out in Antarctica, and the the camera team got this amazing footage of them uh, the spy hopping. Do you know what that is? Yeah, yeah. Just spy hopping. And Can you fucking, explain it to me, please? <laughs> basically, they just kind of bounce up and down because the seals are chilling on a I- little ice float, thinking like, ah, I'm good. Okay. And then they just all circle them, and they just, at first it just looks like they're fucking with the seal, like just yeah. trying to terrify it. And then eventually they get the water churning, and it turns the iceberg over, and oh. the seal just slides into one of their mouths. That you is a bad it, way to go. And it just looks like cruel and unusual punishment, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really does. Seeing a I mean, whale, it's like torture. seeing a whale spy hop, I've had the good fortune of seeing it with a bunch of different species now, is one of the most bizarre things on earth. <laughs> and you're you're like sitting, especially like down in Baja where I go and, and do the whale stuff. It's like you're sitting there and the ocean's super flat. And then when you think of a whale, you think of like a breach, right? Right. Or like a blow where the back comes out in a spout. And instead you just see this like pencil. Like <laughs> right. but, like 
uh, like so they go straight vertical, Peter. So just they, yeah. they go all the way like whale swims like this. They go like yeah. this and they yeah, go yeah, straight yeah. up and they go far, man, like 15, 20 feet high out of the water. So you're like sitting in this boat and you're like, oh, there's no <laughs> whales around here. I haven't seen anything. And then all of a sudden this like penis grows out of the ocean because they're very <laughs> penis shaped. There's like this yeah. giant cylindrical animal just comes <laughs> straight up. And it's like it's almost like it needs a sound effect. It's like whoop, whoop. whoop. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's the most, yeah, like that. That's uh, yeah. humpbacks doing it is wild. It's just like the most bizarre thing to see. Yeah, that is wild, dude. And so then they just stir the water up and tilt, eventually tilt the, uh, the glacier yeah, just, or whatever just, it is. It just falls over and the seals toast, boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good it's way to good. eat, though. I mean, although it I'll sounds t- like it requires a lot of energy to do so with all that weight on the whale. Just, I don't think so. Uh, I think with the oh, they, it I know. they figure it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they don't even eat it in the end. They'll let it crawl back on. It's like, all right, round two, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like a game for them a bit too. It hey, actually is. Mamadou, I, I'd like to see. Have you ever done a video on the bombardier beetle? Yes. <laughs> oh, have you? So I was gonna dumb. say, if not, you got to do it. It's my favorite animal superpower. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> a little butt acid. Yeah. Um, Mamadou, before we move on. I put up a post, and this is so much fun. I don't know if I ever, uh, I don't know if I ever got, um, ever talked about this on the pod. On April Fool's Day last or this year, so just a few months ago, I put up a post which my buddy made, Dave Sunshine. He's a Brosner of the podcast, and uh, he put up, he built this fake Free Willy poster. And I was like, by the way, I think there's like free three Free Willy movies. I'm not really sure. And I was like, I'm the new star in Free Willy Five. You know, thank you to everybody that has supported me. Here it is. Kyle's got it. And if you read, like, I, I can't see it. It's so small. But it's, like, it's starring, like, starring Forrest Galante, supporting actors of, like, Brad Pitt and George Clooney, directed by Steven Spielberg. And this is all posted on April 1st. And it says, in the like, in the location is, like, April Fool's Day or something like that. And there are hundreds of comments of people being like, oh, my God, congratulations. No way. This is so <laughs> great. And then uh, and then like, you know, like I, I put it up in the morning. I like went to the gym, had a cup of coffee, whatever, checked it around lunchtime and all these people. So I put up a post going, hey, this is an April Fool's prank. And then there were like 150 more comments of like, you suck, man. How could you do this? Like, that is a stupid prank. And it's just like it went on for days. I thought it was absolutely hysterical. Yeah, it literally says April Fools in the location of that post. Correct. Correct. That's, dude, I'm always I always get pissed on April Fools. I, I just I just don't believe anything. I'm just like, nope. If it's got one sniff of of being out there, I'm just like, not real fake. So, Forrest, <laughs> you brought that up as if you were going to ask Mama to a question. No, I just wanted to tell him about my free Willy experience because I thought it was funny. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, we're talking whales here, mate. Yeah, see? He said it was entertaining. That's all I got. Yeah. I, I don't have much else to contribute this evening. I, I got well, a couple I wonder, stories. Though, like, can, so I don't know how TikTok works. Can people comment on your videos? Yes. yes. What's uh, What percentage of comments piss you off? <laughs> Honestly, none of them. Because if you took the time out of your day to leave something crazy, that's like, and that, that I'm probably never going to see. There's probably some <laughs> wild-ass comments that I've never seen, and right. you wasted all that energy, the keystrokes and everything. Yeah, and I'm never going to see it. And then when I do see it, it's like, OK, can I see your profile? Do you have a profile picture? No, I can't really, really take that seriously. Right. Yeah, so, totally. But, no, you know, that's hard. like a really small percentage. Like for the most part, it's been pretty positive. Like, uh, yeah, uh, actually, it depends on the platform. Now, TikTok's really positive. YouTube is, I guess, uh, more of a mixed bag. But for the most part, it's more positive. I'd say maybe like 95, 5 Instagram. So, there's a small group of people on Instagram that don't fucking like me, and I don't <laughs> understand where it comes from. Yeah, it it is a pick whatever. Instagram's ah, a weird negative space that I feel like it didn't used to be. I feel like what I feel like every social media platform gets Andy dicked as soon as mm. uh, as soon as it gets negative. Like Facebook was cool; everybody loved it. Like I remember when Facebook first came to UCs right after right after um, Ivy League schools. And that was it. It was just, uh, it was just Ivy League schools and University of California. So I was like, oh, this is sweet. Like you have to be pretty cool to be on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, and then it, it like blew up and blew up. And then it was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Got negative. I was like, ah, fuck this place. Then everybody went to Instagram, 
Now Instagram's fucking toxic. Now everybody's on TikTok. It's like it, it just gets Andy dicked. It's like it just keeps thing. moving. Yeah, it just it just like it moves and then the negativity catches up with it and then it just moves to the next thing. It's it's so weird the way that There's happens. always got to be a thing though. Like for for Facebook it was the it was groundbreaking because it was social media and everything in the news feed. Pictures, updates, people love to talk about themselves. Instagram is all pictures, TikTok's all short videos, you know. So you got to have that thing to break in and then and then YouTube I, I I disagree. I think YouTube has like the worst people in the world on it. Don't Not, we have like all pretty positive stuff on YouTube? I don't think I've ever read a YouTube comment. No, but, but I mean, if you've ever watched a, a popular video on there and gone to the comments, it is just vile. There's constant. <laughs> yeah. It's like ridiculous, you know, like just stuff that doesn't even make sense. And you're like, why what? are you talking about Dude, Republicans and Democrats on a thing? tortoise video? We don't charge for anything, <laughs> right? No. Tick, his TikTok's free, our YouTube's free, everything's free. And people will go on, if we post a video that's like 59 minutes, there will inevitably be someone who's like, ugh, would have liked to have seen this an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking pissed off are you about something else, man? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I never take it seriously. It's like, you clearly got some other stuff going on. I almost yes. kind of feel bad for you. Yeah, yeah. So dude, one hundred percent. I almost don't respond. Most of the time, I'll just pin it and let other people respond for me. <laughs> oh, or that's just see how long genius. you keep the comment up. That's such a good strategy. You just take the most <laughs> negative comment and pin that's it brilliant. and let other people play with it. Oh, that is just, yeah. I'm definitely taking over that strategy. That is hilarious. You always, you always do wonder what's going on with those people. I got, I got a text message. I think I've mentioned this on the pod before. I sent it to you, Pat, after we did a live, a uh, live YouTube of the podcast. And my buddy just goes, what are you, uncomfortable or something on camera? <laughs> I'm just like, and then it was followed by a bunch of other shit. And uh, he basically called me like a California douche and, and all this other stuff. And he's like a friend of mine from back in Chicago. And I'm just like, God damn, he must be fucked up on something. Like, this is <laughs> wild, wild times. But yeah, people are nuts, man, especially in this day and age after the pandemic for some was a blessing for some. It's a fucking curse. Well, dude, think about it. Like when we were angry teenagers, I don't. I know the three of us were. I don't know about you, Mama Do, but we all had phases <laughs> where we were angry little shitty kids Indeed. going through puberty. Indeed. You know, yeah. the only thing we could do was like blast heavy metal in our rooms and just oh, fucking yeah. rage. Whereas she like now you can me. just remember puddle of mud. She fucking hates yeah. me. Yeah, she now you can just go online me. and share your rage with other people to try and make <laughs> them feel as shitty as you do. Yep. That's what it is. I think mean, that's the problem. Not enough people have gotten punched in the mouth for saying the wrong thing. Yeah, oh, sure. Agreed. straight up. Agreed. Oh my god! Can you imagine if you like went to school and said some of the shit that people post online to somebody's face? <laughs> it would just be it'd be fist fights left and right. You couldn't get away with that. That'd be insane. Yeah, I mean, dude, it, it's gonna be so fucking hard raising a boy in this bullshit, man. I have no idea. Like I. I got to teach him how to fight first and foremost, but not to fight first Dude, off. Bro, like, you want to get in big trouble with your wife? Uh, hold on. Can I pirate what you're saying for a second, Peter? Yeah, of course. Let me explain to Mamadou and, and the brosters if they don't know. Peter's having a, a son like probably in about 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> a couple days, but yeah. When, when is your wife due, That's Peter? Awesome. Monday. So Monday. She's due well, Monday. So, so it's the 22nd. Man. Thanks, man. The 27th. Yeah. So he, they're, they're, they're having a kid real soon. And uh, Patrick and I both have like two. How how old's yours? Yeah, like one, fifteen months. Okay, or mine's two and a half. And uh, so my kid is like a person now. He's turning three in October, and uh, he's like a person. That's when they're people, right? Mm -hmm. And so my favorite things to do with him are roughhouse wrestle. I've taught him how to box, you know, like little kid boxing. It's not real boxing. And when we, we go to rugby on Saturdays, and when Daddy plays, he can tackle anybody basically. You know, any of the big <laughs> people on the sideline. Now, these are all great, hilarious things as, <laughs> as a dad who's like, yeah, my son's tough until you put him in a social setting with other children his age and he runs up to them and he's like, tackle! And he just like hits a kid <laughs> at full speed on the playground that he's never met before. He goes, you want to box? And he just punches a kid in the side of the head. And uh, my, my wife, like, Jessica is like, she'll, she'll just look at me when I'm playing these games. And she's like, I hate you. Like, you're making my life harder every day. And I've told you this. And yet you think this is good behavior. 
And I, I just don't understand why a two and a half year old doesn't have the logic to figure out when it's appropriate and when it doesn't. <laughs> well, he learns that from the parents. I mean, that's so I think true. there's a failure somewhere <laughs> in the pipe there. And that's why you act like you have no idea where he got it from. You just go and like, <laughs> damn See, that's, <laughs> that's smart. That? Like, yeah. that's smart. Every must time, be like, daycare. Yeah, it must be daycare. Totally. I should just start when my wife's not home teaching him these things. And when she's home, it's like, yeah, yeah, we just snuggled. You know, that's all we do. We <laughs> yeah, struggle. right. She wouldn't uh, buy that for a second. Like, you got to so, be more nuanced. Let me, change, let me change gears here for a second. Yeah. yeah. So, Mama, do you have a book coming out, don't you? Yes, sir. I didn't so, know that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 100 that's Animals cool. That Can uh, Effing End You. I, I nice. Title. It's basically the um, – basically just my TikTok videos in written word, but, like, I added a lot to it because, obviously, there's a time constraint on TikTok. Uh, it used to be just 60 seconds. They opened it up a lot more, but still, you don't want to just be, you know, rambling on and on. I can do right. that with this book. I can kind of go all the way down the rabbit hole. And you That's can tell cool. which animals I had a certain bias towards because some animals got like one page, some got like three. And uh-huh. Right. Like the jaguar? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I, I can. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, nice, sick, dude. dude. I haven't seen Love that. That's yeah, amazing. Uh, that cover is incredible. Dude, titles sell books. I feel like this. I feel like I'm going to see this in like. That's LAX at yeah. the airport. At the airport. The <laughs> totally. only place that you can still buy books. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be a self-promoting is- asshole for like 10 seconds. It's uh, available it. for pre-order. It's uh, available uh, July 5th. There's also an, uh, an audio book because, you know, no one has an attention span anymore. I don't. So, <laughs> right. you know, Accurate. if you're not tired of my voice, you can listen to the audio book. Nice, go. man. That's yeah, awesome, bro. dude. That's Let the us coolest know drops, book cover man. I've ever seen. Like, did you design that? How how did you come up with this? Ooh, that wasn't me. I am not artistic at all. Um, we had uh, a couple illustrators. One of them was um, Butcher Billy. He did he did a lot of the heavy lifting here. Okay. And uh, yeah, he made something that was kind of identified towards my uh, audience. And uh, I liked it. And um, I feel like this is a good reflection of what you can expect in a book. So That's dude, awesome. it's and so it's kind of just it's a field guide. So it's like each animal is a quick read. It might be three minutes, might be a minute, right? Exactly. Yeah, dude, that is exactly. I feel like how people read. Yeah, yeah. man. It's like totally. should, everyone in the U.S. should have this book on top yep. of their toilet. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'm gonna buy them, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm definitely getting it. Where I got to pre-order it on uh, Amazon. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of places you can pre-order on. I think the most popular is Amazon. Right on, man. Which yeah. animal? Which animal has the most words dedicated to it in the book? Like, which one did you just riff on the most? Off the top of you know, this is it's weird because it's so random. I think it was the giant river otter. Okay. Oh, I just, interesting. Yeah, because they're just in. I think it was right off what after I did like a long form video on them, so I had a lot of like creative juices still left over. And they're just psychopaths. And I've thought about and I've <laughs> yeah. felt that way for a very long time. And people think I'm crazy because they hear otter and they think, wait, no, they like Cute. hold hands while they're sleeping. So they don't <laughs> right. they wrap right. themselves yes. in kelp. They're so adorable. I'm like, no, they're like wild ass animals that will fu-. like th- there are so many like news articles for because of people going up to these otters because they think it's like a teddy bear and then they get mauled or their dog gets mauled or them and their dog gets mauled and then it makes the headlines and nobody there you go that <laughs> look at his eyes <laughs> go like go Dude, through multiple is... images and look it in its eyes there's nothing there they don't have a soul <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so in I, fact. <laughs> i'm one of the idiots that thought that way by the way and i mean i know that all mustelids are pretty crazy but i was in the P- pantanal looking at them doing exactly what that one's doing, eating armored catfish and Procostumus and stuff. And I talked to one of the guys there, and I was like, hey, you like the next group of otters we see, do you think I could slip in the water and try to get close to them? And he's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, we'll just like, they're, they're otters. Like, I'll swim up to them. It'll be really cool. They'll probably like interact with me. He's like, yeah, they'll interact with you. They'll rip you to fucking shred. He's like, the jaguars <laughs> don't, do don't come near these things. Yeah, and I he was like he's like apps under no circumstances can you do that, <laughs> and I had no idea. I'm like yeah, like I know that they're tough and I know they can you know fend off a jaguar. I didn't think that just swimming up to them would lead to like decimation. And he's like, right, oh, it will destroy you if you try and do that. That's wild. You don't ever a, hear that. Just a quick message to anybody watching: like these things can grow to six feet long. This this. Animal is longer than the average man in America. I just wanted right. to point that out. I had fucking I'm five seriously. Right. That's crazy. 
Well, yeah, because you see videos like I went and swam with the little Asian small clawed otters in, uh-huh. uh, in San Diego at that, that place. Yeah. Yeah. They're the cutest fucking thing in the world. They're climbing around. They're ripping women's sh- shirts down and bikini tops. <laughs> you know, they're fucking – they're so cute. And you're like, I need 20 of these. I don't care what the law is. Right. A six-foot otter? Terrifying. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Ludicrous. By the way, I think I think it might be time. It's guys. time. Do you yeah. have it? Because I – I, I have it. You know Go for it. it. I got okay. nothing, baby. All right. We need a jingle first. We got the what? The Battle Royale. We'll edit in later. It's time for the Battle, Battle Royale. Royale. Mama, do we play a game? The Brosners love it. It's called the Battle Royale. I'm sure you've probably never listened to a full episode of the show. So, <laughs> Forrest, explain to him how it works. Absolutely. So, in light of your wonderful book that's coming out, 100 Animals That Can Fucking Kill You, we are going to do an old-school battle royale. And this is called Three Animals That Can Fucking Kill You. So what we're going to do <laughs> is we're, we're going to go in order. We're going to do it like a snake draft. And we're just going to name one animal that can fucking kill you, but there's a kicker. Okay, and we're going to move on. We're going to we get three each, Mamadou. So I go first, you go second, then Peter, then Patrick, then Patrick goes again, and it works backwards. It's a snake draft, you know, ah, up and down. Yeah, it's like okay. a fantasy football draft. Yeah, and uh, we're going to name three animals that can fucking kill you. But there's a kicker to this game. Okay, one of them okay. has to be in the air, one of oh, them has shit. to be on land, mm. and one has to be in the water. And at the end of the day, the Brosners will weigh in and vote. Very simple, very clean battle royale. They're not all fighting each other. This is just you picking... Three animals that can fucking kill you. And at the end of the Battle Royale, Brosners will weigh in, they'll vote, and we'll find out who made the most terrifying, shredding team of animals that can kill you. All right. Let's wow. get it. Before I ask, so when you say it in the water, that means like it's just primarily in the water, or there's a reason I'm asking that. 100%. It can be aquatic, it can be semi aquatic. Otter totally flies if you want to go river <laughs> otter. You know, you can okay. do killer whales. Like, you it, it it does, it's pretty, we're pretty flexible on the rules here. Okay. Peter that's usually fair. picks herpes as one of his guesses, and that doesn't fit into anything. It's been a while. But, it, you know, <laughs> herpes is very dangerous. That's true, it's yeah. And it, that, that's, a, that's a dated reference. That's like in episodes 7 through 90. <laughs> um, <laughs> 7 through 90. Um, all right, Forrest, all right. you kick it off. Let the, I'll kick let it, the it biologist off. Kick it it off. It. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, all right, I'm going to go first. I'm going to take a good one off of the table. Animals that can fucking kill you. My first pick, the golden eagle. Okay. Son of a bitch. Yep, you're welcome. Yep. That's why I'm lucky <laughs> I, I got to go first. I swear to God, first. I thought air, and that's the okay. Yep, that's why Lost. I'm lucky I got to go first. So my first pick, golden eagle, giant predatory bird, capable of swooping down, killing whole deer with their incredibly large talons, uh, native to actually right here in the United States, but also Mongolia and several other places. I believe the second largest flying eagle after the stellar sea eagle. I could be wrong. They might be the biggest, but they are... Big, gnarly, predatory birds. That is my first pick. Okay. All right. right. Mamadou, you're up. You you don't have to go air. You can go any of the three. Any order. Uh, I'm going hippos. Nice. uh, Let's see. Land, water. I'm going to say hippos for water. Ah, That's a good water pick. They kill about 500 people a year. They're fucking terrifying. Uh. For the most, in the wild, a lot of people are afraid of like the, the, the wild, like the really dangerous animals. But for the most part, if you respect their space, you'll be fine. Hippos, the world is their space. Right. <laughs> you are trespassing <laughs> at yeah. all times. It's yeah. terrifying. They can't actually swim. So when one comes up to you on your boat, it's actually chasing you underwater, like full send. Uh, That's I saw crazy, hip- dude. I saw They're a running. video. Yeah. This probably, like, I'm not going to go too long on this, but I remember I watched a video of, like, uh, these African wild dogs chasing this antelope. The ch- and basically they cornered it. It was going into the water. A hippo comes in, scares off the African wild dogs. Stupid me. I'm like, oh, cute. It saved the – before I can even f- complete that thought, it proceeded to maul the antelope completely. Didn't wow. kill it, but just crippled it. And it just w- sat there and watched. And then the African oh. wild dogs are just there like, we were going to, like, watch it. that. So <laughs> they're just they- – they thrive off malicious intent. They're homicide horses on steroids. Uh, all, all of the <laughs> hippos, number one pick. Yeah, man. Hippos it's a great are pick. terrifying. It's a great pick. They're, we've talked about them on the pod many, many times. For, it, Forrest had to save some tourists back in uh, South Africa from some hippos. Correct. Legit. It is one of it is an animal that I am the most scared of, by the way, is the hippo. So it's a great pick. It's a great pick. Um, <laughs> who's next? Uh, Peter. Me? 
Yep. All right, well, I am gonna go with my, let's see, I have three screens up here, but I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go, if you can't tell, I'm like the everyman, I don't know shit about animals, so I'm gonna go with dogs, okay, as my land animal, oh, just on, a pack dude. of dogs <laughs> nope, that have rabies, rabid <laughs> dogs kill 59,000 per year, gonna be 10 in my pack, that's 590,000 people there was a pack. dead. Not god damn it. Pack I like how dogs. he I like how he just created a pack of dogs and gave them a disease. Correct. Yeah, like completely <laughs> like, Dude, look at that. Kyle, thank you Kyle for the thank visual you. aid of dog <laughs> with rabies. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. All that's right. terrifying. <laughs> you know what it's like to die from rabies? You go crazy in your bed. You can't drink uh, water. You're terrified I, of it. I told terrible. you we're lenient with the rules here, Mama yeah, Do, and it's that's because fair. That's it's, fair. it's a solid pick. Yeah, yeah the, the <laughs> thousand jury, dogs. The jury is the listeners. They will let us know yeah. <laughs> how Peter did. Rabbit right. dogs. I'm going with. I'm going to start because I have two picks here. I'm going to take my land animal off the table. Okay. By far the scariest land animal, and it's not even fucking. They kill by far the most humans every year. I am taking the human being. I'm taking <laughs> oh my a God. very angry. I've gotten scorched I'm, for this. I'm taking I one. I was terrified that someone was going to go there. Yeah, no, I don't want to make it too serious. I'm just taking a very angry guy who just caught, just caught his wife cheating on him with his brother. Um, he was already on steroids and TRT because he was going bald and, and didn't have a lot of energy. So this is a dangerous guy. Uh, second, are, you are you talking about Joe Rogan? No, not Joe oh, Rogan. Oh, Dana Jesus. White. Uh, no, what are the yeah. gun laws like in his state? Yeah, yeah that's oh, all he needs. Yeah. Very lenient. Oh, oh yeah, we're okay. in Arizona. We're This well, is in we Phoenix. We're, oh, okay, um, we're all dead. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's 120 degrees. It's in Phoenix. Uh, oh, he's angry my, too. I'm taking my <laughs> water animal. This okay. is this is the one that terrifies me the most. I'm taking the freshwater snail. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm taking the freshwater snail. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. They carry snail okay. fever. They kill 10,000 people a year. When you because you're thinking, hey, I just found some fresh water. I'm parched. I'm gonna drink it. God damn it! There was a snail sitting two feet over, just being all coy. How does it? What What does it do when you get the the snail fever? Is it just like you? Well, also oh, rat it, lungworm. Remember, I told you yeah, guys about rat, rat lungworm. lungworm. When you touch it, you get that rat's disease that crawls into your brain because they can't find your lungs. Oh, yeah, yeah. That uh, that teenager ate one as a joke. Got rat yeah. lungworm. Dead. Oh, he gone. Christ. So I've, right. th that those are my terrifying. two. Back to you for one, Peter. And the scary thing about that is that it could be any body of water. You just have to be terrified of fresh drinking water. fresh water. Fresh yeah. water. Yeah. It, it could be in an it. Evian bottle. <laughs> 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 Peter, you're up. <clears throat> my animal, my my sky animal <laughs> is sky a bearded animal. vulture or a lammergeers. Oh an dude. eagle like Got vulture it. of the old world. These birds often reach lengths of more than 40 inches with a wing spread of nearly 10 feet. Terrifying. And how they kill you, they pick you up into the air as high as 260 feet. And then just drop your ass onto flat rocks, cracking open your bones so that they can get at the marrow. So they if there are any newborn babies listening, Correct. you should yeah. be very scared of this vulture. They can pick you up, baby. You're tiny. You're meager. <laughs> okay. Beard of vulture. Uh, yep. That, uh, good job, Peter. It's amazing you knew all those facts off the top of your head like I know. That. It's uh, crazy. I've been researching yeah. in my bed at night. It's clearly. always the every man that manages to win in any bracket. Because no <laughs> because we're relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, do you're up? Uh, I'm classifying the hippo as land. So for water, I'm gonna go with filarial worms. They're uh, a parasitic ooh, worm. More worms, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They love to invade people. Uh, they love hanging out in the lymph nodes where they can block oh. fluids from leaving the body. If they do that, you can end up with a disease known as elephantiasis. Part I don't know if it's true, but if it it might have gotten its name because it makes her arms and legs look like that of an elephant's. Swells up to almost cartoonish proportions. Oh, Not only does it, it fuck you up. Oh, yeah. That, it's, it's fun. It's a fun time. Uh, what, what is this type of worm? Filarial worms. Filarial worms. Wow. They're about as long as your finger and as thin as sewing threads. So good luck trying oh to see Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. 
Yeah, fucking yeah. terrifying. I'm going strictly for intimidation because I don't got to kill everybody. I'll just <laughs> fuck somebody up and send a message. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's not just the arms and legs that can be inflated. It can also get your testicles too. Like, Ooh, you ever I've see South that. Park where he had the wheelbarrow? Yep. That, yes. That, that's exactly what could happen. They made Hilarious it look kind of fun, though, it's where you could, like, use them as, like, a hoppity <laughs> hop. That looked kind of fun. Though. Hoppity hop. Imagine the pain, though. Oh, dude. Dude. Oh, thank you. Honestly, that's, the, worms, the worms are fucking just, just terrible. I, and I am terrified. I, I think I'm going to lose this because I'd just run away, honestly, and never drink water again. You guys, you guys are thinking nicely outside of the box. I'm going to stay where I belong, squarely inside of the box, and <laughs> just, just pray and hope that the Brosners respect that decision respect this uh this good rule following that i'm doing as a good samaritan so i have golden eagles by air my land animal is an unusual pick and i'll tell you why hmm. i'm going to pick the cape buffalo and i'll tell you why hmm. not only are they incredibly intimidating they kill lots of people but they are just so full of testosterone and so pissed off a hundred percent of the time it's not like a jaguar or, or a lion or something like that that's going to kill you and then move on. If you put a Cape Buffalo in a room of people, it will make <laughs> oh sure that God. every single person in that room is dead before it's a, it exits. They're going, they're going to kill that lion, dude. 100%. That's crazy. They are unbelievable. And the they're, lion knows it. And yeah, the lion yeah, knows it. fucking yeah. out of there. They, they are so aggressive. They're not something that you expect, but God, you know, I would take on a lion before a Cape Buffalo 100% of the time. Well, you so are that, a lion, man. That is my land animal, and I better write it down because I'll forget my own pick. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that is my land animal. And then for water, I'm going to go with a box jellyfish, okay? Uh, it, yeah, it, that's not And here's, here's why. What, it, what it's not disease? the big teethy thing. You're not going to know that it's coming. Um, but you're certainly going to find out it can kill many people at once without realizing it. All it takes is you to swim through, mash it up, and then it hits the whole pot of people that are swimming there. Box jellyfish is my water. Jesus. Yep. That's awful. Ugh. That's All from right. the tentacles? Yep. Yep. Very, right. very poisonous. So, Mamadou, <laughs> Forrest stole your, your bird pick or your aerial pick. So what's your? how are you going to round out your squad here? Let's see. I got, I got, I got a tank in the hippo. That's land. I have filarial worms. So for air, I'm gonna go with. Hmm. This might be. This might be slightly controversial. I'm. I'm going with mosquitoes. By far the highest body count of any animal. Good pick. Uh, Good they've pick. They've killed more people than all the world's wars combined. And how are you going to square up with a mosquito? Let alone a whole bunch of them. <laughs> uh, and if we're gonna be specific. I'm gonna go with the Anopheles mosquito. They're the ones that carry malaria. And what's weird is they could be a whole lot more dangerous because there's like three thousand species of them. Only three. Well, not only three, but mostly three are responsible for like you know killing people. Mm -hmm. And of those three, it's only the females that drink blood. So right. there are so. I, if I just fuck with them a little bit, you know, change certain aspects about them, you know, just go yep. go be on my Jurassic Park shit. I could create a race of mosquitoes <laughs> that will straight up just demolish anybody. Yep. <laughs> mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are a good pick. Good I'm going to give you that one. Good picks. Ritep. Uh For me, in the box with Forrest right there, <laughs> holding hands. I'm going with a great white shark for my uh, ocean pick. They're terrifying. They have, they have rows and rows of razor sharp teeth. They're aggressive. Uh, if they're hungry, I'll, I'll definitely be starving them for... Everybody who <laughs> wants to come around, and they will just tear the fuck out your ass, motherfucker. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm going to round out my team of humans, snails. I'm going to take to the <laughs> sky, and I'm going to go with a bird that I find fascinating called the hooded patui. Oh, uh, patui. Great. Yeah, very good. Pick. The hooded patui, they eat poison dart frogs. They take the poison. They store it in the feathers. Wow. And then you're like, oh, look at this really cute orange bird. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna touch it. Like, this looks cool. Yeah. Now your fingers are tingling. You're in bad shape. <laughs> Put a Dude, patooey. A lot of fucking poisons and, and parasites and, good and disease going around yeah. in this. You and, know what that shows, though? You know what that shows? Biological warfare. 
Yeah, <laughs> that <laughs> shows an understanding because the people that are picking tigers and lions and bears, granted, I basically did that. <laughs> they they know less because that is what it's all about. It is these parasites. It's biological warfare. Let's recap. Let the Brosners weigh in. Vote. Go on to the YouTube. Go on to wherever you consume this podcast. Let us know who won tonight's Battle Royale. Three animals that can fucking kill you. <laughs> Was it me, Forrest, with the golden eagle, eagle air assault, the Cape buffalo on land, or the box jellyfish in the water? Was it Mamadou's troublesome trio of the hippos on land, <laughs> the mosquito by air, and the phalangeal worm by water, which just sounds icky. Yeah. Um, Peter came in weird with rabies dog. Uh, yes, a pack. He said, he said thousands pack will allow it. Um, rabies dogs, plural, uh, bearded <laughs> vulture by air, and a great white shark by water. Truly a terrifying combo minus the vulture, which preys on carrion. Um, uh, and to round us out, let us know if your vote is for Patrick, whose combination is a freshwater snail, which means, you know, you're not safe drinking anywhere, a hooded patooey, a nice venomous little adorable bird, or by far the scariest thing on this uh, on this list, which is a guy who just saw his wife cheating that's currently on steroids in Arizona. Um, in the summer. With a gun. In the summer, with a gun. So yeah. that is Several very dangerous. Uh, weigh in, let us know who won tonight's Battle Royale. Thank you for listening to it. It was quite something. Mamadou, where, where can the people find you if they don't know you? They can find me on a TikTok. My handle is M N D I A Y E underscore ninety seven. Uh, Instagram, uh, same exact handle without the underscore. And I'm also on YouTube, uh, Casual Geographic. I make the same videos I make on TikTok, but I, uh, it's more long form content. I can kind of like go down the rabbit hole if I want to. And uh, yeah, that's and and one more time that where's that book available and what's it called? A uh, hundred animals that can fucking kill you. It's available for pre-order right now. It's uh, uh goes out July fifth. Uh, Amazon for the most part, but uh, almost every social media I have the links there. It's a bunch of places to pre-order, no matter where you are. So uh, nice, yeah, check that out. Good stuff, good stuff, dude. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll absolutely. Have it every- uh, Brosners, uh, we have a very special thing premiering after this episode so stay tuned uh we have a segment coming and you're going to love it it is an iNaturalist segment where brosner drew canes breaks down and highlights several of the brosner finds in the iNaturalist project if you don't know what that is go to iNaturalist.com but stay tuned for uh for that right after this thank you so much mama duke thank you two Mom- gentlemen mama Duke. Not Marmaduke. Uh, hey, I used to get that all the time. I, I was told I'd be paid five hundred dollars if I called you Marmaduke. That's true. So. There was a there was a Kyle offered him five hundred bucks to call him Marmaduke the whole time without breaking a without breaking face. Uh, uh, he's to, never coming back. To, yes, he is. He loves us. To, all right. to find to find all the links to everything. The wild. T- Stop rushing me, Pat. All the links to everything, thewildtimespodcast.com forward slash info, the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash wildtimespod. All of our socials are at wildtimespod. We love you, brosners. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good one. Cut that out, Kyle. Or I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah, that was something. Hi, first episode of the iNaturalist observation segment it is I, your host, Drew Keynes. I'm here with our newly announced co-host, Mr. Dom Alinelli. What's up, Dom? Hey, Drew. How's it going, man? I'm doing great. Super happy to have you with us. So you want to give us a little bit about yourself before we get into it today? Yeah, I am a zoology major at San Diego State University. So just heard back the other day that I got in there. So I'm super excited about that and super excited to be on here today. Nice. Congrats, dude. And you're a fellow Brosner. Bella Brosner, OG. Happy to be represented as always. So yeah, uh, I brought Dom on to help me with this segment just to chat it up about some really cool observations. We've been pulling out some cool ones, and today's going to be the first three that we kind of show you guys. So uh, by the way, Dom, I, I had trouble pronouncing your last name earlier. earlier. That's um, that's Italian, right? Alinelli? Very, very Italian. You, uh, oh, yeah. If you go back a few generations, it's half Italian, half Sicilian. Now, you Sicilian, know, you say? Yeah. I usually don't bring that up, but if you're talking to 
another Italian, it's a pretty big distinction to make. Which I am. And my lineage is also Sicilian, which is very interesting that you bring that up because our first animal today is a species of Sicilian. Now, you may be thinking, about, are you about to show us some hairy Italian dudes on the podcast? And no, I'm going to show you a amphibian that is called a Sicilian. So this is a Sicilian right here. You see, it looks like this crazy worm snake type deal. And uh, before we got into our research, Dom, did you even know what this was? I I don't know if I'd even heard of these guys beforehand. I When I first saw this photo, I thought maybe it was like some type of legless lizard, which many people don't even know about. Definitely mm. looks like a snake to probably most people. Yeah, so this is just a crazy animal. Um, I've learned about it in a couple of different classes in the past. And yeah, I mean, when people think of amphibians, they think of frogs, maybe salamanders. But there's this whole other taxonomic order of amphibians that are called the Sicilians. And they show some crazy behaviors. So this one here is the Nguyen Sicilian. And this observation was taken in a uh, part of Vietnam by Mr. Chris Joel, one of our Brosners. Uh, so you can see, if I zoom the map out here, right outside of the capital there, Ho Chi Minh City, right on the coast, or close to the coast. And yes, yeah, so this is, A, just a really cool species that I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, and B, this specific Sicilian is very special because... This is actually the first and only observation of this animal, of this species of Sicilian on iNaturalist. Whoa, that's impressive. Yeah, and it's by a Brosner, which I think is just so cool. Yeah, I kind of poked around. Yeah, there, there are some similar species um, in that area, but that specific species, I, I talked to him in the comments section, and he said that it's only known as a separate species based on genetics, and he knows some of the scientists who have studied it. And yeah, he's the only person ever to log a species on iNaturalist. I thought that was that's, so cool. That's wild. That's some pretty serious bragging rights right there. Absolutely. And I just think it's so cool that a Brosner did it. Just a great example of what cool stuff we're bringing in. Yeah, it really shows the uh, impact that citizen science can have. Yeah. But Sicilians, I mean, they're, they're so crazy. They're mostly fossorial, so they live underground most of the time. Uh, they have... A really crazy behavior. I don't believe in this species. Are you familiar with dermophagy, Dom? Um, I, I'm i not, but I can kind of guess what it is. It's got something to do with their skin, doesn't it? You're right. So dermo means skin. And do you know what phagy means or phage? Um, kind of, but I don't, I don't know if I could put it in a sentence. Take a guess. Like, like a one-word guess of phage. Like some type of stage or I don't know. I'm not sure. Phage means eat. So we put that together. We have skin oh, right, right. eater. Oh, that is scary and disturbing. Well, let me explain. So some species of Sicilian, the mothers, they actually, they'll produce their young. And the way they'll feed them is they'll they'll produce this thick skin secretion. Basically, it's like their skin gets kind of thicker and full of nutrients. And the young Sicilians will actually feed off of that skin. That'll be their source of nutrients. Whoa, that's, that's yeah. a pretty crazy adaptation. Crazy, right? Yeah. They I'm literally, glad we're not Sicilians, at least that type of Sicilian. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be the other type, despite um, some jeering from my mainland Italian friends. But yeah, it's just such a crazy creature. They're so cool. Not a lot is known about them because they're so secretive. I mean, they're underground most of the time. But it's just this total other category of amphibian that most people just don't even know exists. They just know about their frogs and their salamanders. So super happy to kind of show that observation off some of the Brosners. Yeah, and they got some pretty crazy teeth, too. I was... I was Checking yeah, them out. Totally. Yeah, I thought they were gonna be like little like little bug eaters and stuff, and they eat all kinds of stuff. Anything they can get their mouths around. They got kind of look like boa or like python teeth, these big old recurved teeth. Yeah, they're a really crazy animal. Uh, but yeah, that yeah. let's move on to our next observation. So, so this is a jumping spider, and this is a whole family of spiders. This is just one species here. Uh, this one specifically was logged by Cam Stewart, better known as Iced Freaking Tea in the Discord. Uh, she's yeah. pretty affluent, bro. Everyone, everyone in the Discord knows and loves Iced Freaking Tea. She's been definitely mentioned on the blog a, a couple times. Definitely another OG of the Brosners and has really, really taken to iNaturalist. She's definitely climbed the rankings of observations and species that she's Absolutely. Got. And she doesn't just go out there with her iPhone, as you can tell with this picture. Like she, she goes out there with her camera and she takes some really cool stuff. Yeah. You guys will definitely be seeing some more of her observations in the future. Oh, yeah. And she got this one from, let's see where this was. Zoom out a little bit. 
This one was in Prescott in Arizona, United States. Okay, and that's that's uh, your realm kind of, right? You're you're pretty close yeah, to my there. kind of my neck of the woods. I've I've traveled through there a few times. Nice. Gor- gorgeous country. Kind of a transition area between what most people think of Arizona, dry desert cactus and then into the mountains of Arizona that's all pine forest. Gotcha. So this transition area, a lot of junipers and stuff. Nice. So, uh, Dom, tell me tell me a couple cool facts about this this is actually the uh, called the species of paradise spider, but they're all within the jumping spider. So yeah, tell me a couple of cool facts about the jumping spider real quick. So these guys are really interesting. I've only heard about them relatively recently that they're one of the more intelligent species of spider. Okay, well, I didn't know that. It kind of changed a lot of scientists' perspective on spiders. I think a lot of people think like, oh, spiders are just bugs. All they have to do is they don't really need, they don't have a need for a lot of intelligence. It's just, oh, I see food. I go and grab it and I eat it type stuff. But yeah, yeah. They show complex mating rituals, which definitely requires intelligence. And they also show individual hunting strategies for different types of prey, which is another yeah. thing that requires high levels of intelligence. So it's definitely yeah. it flipped the uh, scientific community on its head when these first when these behaviors are first observed. Nice. I, I had no idea about that, actually. Super yeah, so cool. you'll see complex mating rituals. The males have to watch out because if they don't do it right, the female will eat them. Yeah, kind of that's cool. You see that a lot in the bug right. world. Yeah. Totally. And then they'll also trick other spiders. They'll mimic other spider mating behaviors to take advantage of them and then ambush those spiders and then eat them. That's crazy. That's Ooh. wild. Real that's like your... mammal level intelligence. That's so badass. That's just like your nature is metal level of just crazy oh, behavior. Yeah. And yeah, something that I, I read in my research is a lot of spiders have really poor eyesight and they rely on their webs that they make to kind of have that sit and wait style of predation where a fly or some type of insect flies into their web and then they feel that vibration and they go in for the kill. Right. But as you kind of alluded to with some of your, uh, the other behaviors you talked about this, these spiders are just the opposite. Uh, You can see in this picture here, they just have such big eyes. Like also another fun fact uh, that's true among all spiders. Everyone knows spiders have eight legs, but a lot of people don't know that spiders have eight eyes too, which is just absurd. Mm-hmm. And you usually and, can't see it, but this one you can see at least six of them. Yeah, you can see the two big ones and the two next to them. There's two on the sides, and I'm sure there's two more in there somewhere. But yeah, this compared to the spiders, they have these big old eyes, which makes them just really cute too. I think these spiders are adorable. Yeah, this, it's, these guys definitely changed my mind. I'm was not a big fan of spiders, and I started learning about these guys. I'm like, all right, these guys kind of cute. And I actually learned in my class the other day at the evolution of eyes that spider eyes each one is kind of specialized for seeing a different type whether it's focused for movement or detail oh, really? or different spectrums of like wavelengths of light damn i didn't know that's crazy yeah so they kind of have like built in uh like night vision goggles that you see like special op guys use that they just have different eyes to do all different kinds of stuff that's sick that is so cool but yeah, and that's just like that just alludes to what I was getting at is their visual acuity. So these big complex eyes are just so much more better fitted for being able to an- like hunt and ambush prey. So they're not that sit and wait predator. They actively go out and they're called jumping spiders for a reason. They they're super athletic. They jump around. They move so fast, so quick, and they're just like they're like the little wolves of the arachnid yeah. world. Really, it's, it's crazy the way. I mean, obviously they're solitary. They don't hunt in packs per se, but. The way that they're able to just move around and just hunt down other prey items is just so cool to me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like kind of, like I said, definitely exhibiting like mammal kind of level behaviors and intelligence with the stuff they do. Kind of totally. the things we normally associate, associate with mammals we're discovering in more and more species. That's a cool way to think about it. And I think a lot of people fit a lot of types of behaviors into boxes within certain uh, taxonomic groups. Maybe in the case of mammals, that kind of that kind of predation style is a good example or that complexity of mating behavior. And I I think you're doing a really good job of kind of emphasizing how we have these crazy cool exceptions that show that these norms aren't necessarily true for certain groups. And I don't even know if it's an exception though. I think this might just be the first one that we've discovered. I think the more and more we learn about different species of animal, we're finding out just how intelligent they are. I mean, totally recently we discovered how intelligent like octopus are and like crows, for example, too. Yeah. These were species that were considered to be intelligent, and now they're either of them are easily, I think, in top five most intelligent animals. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, now there's like so many more ways to define intelligence, too. Oh, and yeah. So, yeah, it's just, it's just super cool to see what seems like such a simple organism from 
a, a, a intelligence perspective showing that complexity. Yeah. What do you have? Uh, what do you have next for us? Sure. So let me go to our net last observation of today's episode. <laughs> Coming up next, we have the snowy owl. Where is, are our Harry Potter fans? There you go. That's actually a good point. This is, I'd say the snowy owl is probably kind of made famous by the Harry Potter series, um, at least on the big screen. I mean, this is just such a pretty owl. Oh, most gorgeous. most owls you think of, I mean, they're going to kind of be different shades of brown or black or whatever. But these owls are so beautiful. They're that bright white color. And they're called the snowy owl not just because they look like snow because they're white, but that's the habitat that they inhabit. They mostly spend a lot of their summer time up in the Arctic hunting uh, mostly lemmings, which are little, I think they're rodents, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. They're, little lemmings, yeah. You don't know what a lemming is. Kind of picture like a wild hamster. Kind of <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. So yeah, a rodent. Uh, but yeah, so they, they spend most of their time up in the Arctic hunting lemmings. And then actually where I'm from in New England, I, I, was, I grew up in coastal New England. Um, these birds would actually migrate for the winter all the way down from the Arctic through Canada down to, and they, they do this throughout a lot of the country, uh, throughout a lot of the U.S., through the Midwest especially. Um, but in a lot of our beaches, these animals would migrate down in the cold months to overwinter. And that was, they're just such a cool bird to observe. They're so gorgeous with those big yellow eyes and that super bright white uh feathering on them they're just they're so pretty I, they're one of my favorite birds yeah definitely they showcase a lot of really interesting adaptations i think a lot of people know owls for their their crazy sight and i think a lot of birds of prey are kind of known for their their visual abilities but i was really surprised yeah. to learn that owls have very acute hearing oh really you're aware of this yeah so you'll see on a lot of owls how they kind of have those big like eye dishes almost that their eyes are kind of like really like set far back in their head. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually to help channel sound into their ears. And if you've ever seen a picture of an owl without any feathers, I kind it's of want horrifying picture, <laughs> it's horrifying, but it, yeah. it showcases something really interesting. Their ears are offset. So they have one ear that's higher and one ear that's lower and it's to help mm. them pinpoint where prey is because like you were saying they mainly eat lemmings and mm. those guys don't like hanging up above ground because of course there's owls hanging around so they're underground yeah. under the snow and these owls can hear where they are and not only where they are they can tell if a lemming or a rodent is pregnant or not and they will actually target pregnant lemmings because there's no way. more food there really yeah absolutely wild so they have not only great eyesight, but incredible hearing as well. What is it that they're hearing? Do you know, like increase second heartbeat or I, I don't larger know if it's second heart heartbeat blood pressure? Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe it's the mom's heart that's bigger that it's pumping more blood to the fetus, or yeah, or may, maybe they are hearing the second heartbeat. That um, is absurd! Uh, wow, damn, yeah, that's it really, crazy. really boggles the mind. Absolutely. Yeah, like the, those those species that hunt in the snow are so special. Like you may have seen on the nature documentaries, like the Arctic fox that kind of does the same thing where it's just walking along the snow and then all of a sudden at seemingly some random point it just goes like, whoosh, just like yeah. pops down to the snow and just comes up with a, a little rodent. Yeah. It's like, damn. So even more impressive, I'd say, for a bird that is just that is flying above the ground to just pinpoint a spot and come out with a prey item. Yeah, and then so if you've ever seen a uh, a U.S. military stealth bomber, those big flat black ones, yep. they've modeled the paneling on those after an owl's wing. So really? on an owl's wing, they have these big feathers at the top of their wing, mm -hmm. and then towards the back of it, they have all these smaller feathers. And what happens is they fly through the air. The air currents hit these big feathers first, and then they hit continually smaller and smaller feathers, and this breaks up all those air currents. So you can't hear an owl fly until it's it's already past you. So, I know I saw I saw a video in one of my classes. I remember it was my wildlife biology class of a barn. I think it was a barn owl in flight, and it was legit. Like it was silent. They they did a couple of different birds, and some of them you could hear some light flapping. But this, I'm pretty sure it's a barn owl. This barn owl flying through, there was no noise. It was just insane to hear. Like yeah. just I can't even describe. It was it was silence. Just this bird, yeah. like this large bird. Owls are big. Except for, I know you have your screech owls. You have your your uh, your burrowing owls. Those are small. But there's a lot of large owls out there. I mean, they're they're a raptor. They're they're a large bird of prey. 
in this video, it was just this bird flying from one handler to the other, and there was it was just complete dead silence. And it was just such a cool representer of how, like you said, we're modeling, uh, we're modeling systems made through evolutionary processes in wildlife for anthropogenic means, like making aircraft. And then yeah. also just how well suited this animal is to be just an apex predator. Yeah, millions of years of evolution have kind of come to this point in time that have just made this almost perfect killing machine. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that uh, is a good representative of our third of three badass species today. Super great first episode. Uh, we're going to have a ton more coming at you. We have well over 50,000 observations now. So you and I got a lot of source material yeah. to go through. Yeah, it's insane. I remember it was like our first benchmark, I think it was just like a thousand or something. Yeah. I think that we're at 50,000 now is incredible. So yeah, we definitely have a lot more observations for you guys. And it's only growing. So it's, it's exciting. We're going to keep showing you all observations that you've done in the past, ones that you're bringing up uh, as we're fil recording these episodes. So, you know, don't feel like if you don't have any past observations that you can't submit new ones or don't think that if you did submit ones in the past that they're not valid because they definitely are. We're digging through, we're looking for the cool stuff, and we're just so excited to be presenting it to all of you and giving you some cool education to go with it. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right. Good stuff. We'll see you all next week. Cue the outro. Check it out.